like uh, Brother Ayobolu, I see these people all over the world. And I'm seeing them differently, not just here. I think I'm seeing right, right? <laughs> Praise God. Your excellence. <laughs> Praise God. So I'm already calling some people excellency here. I see them. I'm seeing them not on this seat. Did you hear me? Then when I see them, I look at the chair behind. But, ah, this lady can't sit here because the security will sit at the back. Right? Amen. 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 And amen. amen. All right. Um, last week, Sunday, and we followed up on the Zoom meeting too. We talked about the end time faith that the Lord Jesus is looking out for. In Luke 18, he said, If the Son of Man comes again, which is the last days, will he find this kind of faith? Oh, sorry, God corrected me. Last Sunday I said, the earth is not responding fast to the commands of faith. The Lord said, no. He said, the resistance is increasing. Not that it's not responding. It's responding. He said, it must respond to faith. It doesn't have a choice. He said, but what is resisting it is increasing. Not, it is not responding. He said, at the command of faith, it must respond. It must respond. Amen? which is what we also saw in Luke 18. There was a resistance. Amen. So, we said in the last days, we highlighted um, the things that will be happening. Darkness, gross darkness. Men's heart will be feeling them. I hear a lot of young people are just dying now. Not necessarily even from sickness. Some just sleep and just don't wake up. 50s, 40s, and um, gross evil, growing wings and becoming mountainous, like kingdom. And once it becomes a kingdom, it takes a king. Your prayer is just to bring the kingdom that will destroy it. No prayer can root it out. I was telling somebody, I said, this politician is a kingdom. I said, no prayer. Your prayer is to raise God's kingdom to match it. Your prayer like on its own. The Bible says, and I saw a golden statue. The head was gold. The breastplate was silver. The tummy brass. The knee iron. The lower part iron mixed with clay. It's as a kingdom whose head has entered into heaven. And the only thing that can bring it down is I saw a stone not caught with hands, caught without hands. That's a mystery. <laughs> the prayer is not a mystery. He said he did what? Smashed it to the ground. So only a kingdom will match it and will subdue it. So what will the prayer of the saints do? God will bring that kingdom. There was no, Pharaoh is a kingdom. You, don't know, you think the children were, were not praying? No, he is a kingdom. God Almighty has given him powers over men. There's nothing anybody can do about it. It's God that gave it to you and his gifts and calling. How would that repentance? That's why when David prayed, turn the cancel over it over to foolish. No, God will answer that stupid prayer. That's a stupid prayer. Even if he's using it to do evil, God will not answer it. It's God will work against himself. No, if he gives, if he tells uh, uh, Samuel, from the day, this is no word of your mouth will fall into the ground. If he's using it to curse, say, God, let his words fall. Say, no, God will make it fall. It will still not fall. As he's using it to destroy, it will still not fall. What God will do, he will raise another kingdom that has the capacity to catch those words and turn it back. Then that will come and face him. Not, not uh, just to pray like that. And those kingdoms, the best way to know them is oppressions. When you bring problems to them, they don't say, let's fast for seven days. Concerned. No, they just say, go wash in the pool of Siloam. 
<laughs> as you wash, it's soft. You get it? Go and do this. Those are kingdoms, which is what will rule in the last days. That's why they say the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the nations of the world. Then the end will come because that's what will subdue everything Satan has raised. That's why you see some Christians pray, pray and fast and they still die. Until there's a kingdom operation. That's what will subdue. But they don't, many people don't understand it. So in Luke 18, Jesus was saying in the last days, <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. There's a particular faith that will be triumphing, triumphing, which is the faith that does not give up, that is persistent. You know, faith oppression is a kingdom. It's like you said, the kingdom of God is likely to a living, uh, uh, living of bread, which a man baked, and the whole. Um, like yeast, which they used to bake bread, and the whole bread was living. That living, Jesus called it a doctrine. So the doctrine of faith is a kingdom. So when a man understands it perfectly, and there's an Ahithophel, you don't say God turn his cancer to foolishness. You just look and say, God, make all those people not receive his cancer, though he will give sound cancer. You can't stop it. You can't stop the sound cancer. You can't stop it. Even ordinary skill, you can't stop it. God respects it. Said of, uh, uh, of Aholia and Bezali, they are skillful. If you say, God, let his skill fail, God will make it fail. He can't make it fail. It has to succeed. But you can say, God, when he, pro when he does the skill and is working, let them not reward him well. The reward of favor deny him. Now, favor comes from God. The skill is of man. God cannot deny him favor. So they just pay him shekere. But they will pay him because that gift will command financial return from services because an excellent gift. Do you get it? <clears throat> if a man loves his wife and the woman misbehaves you, that woman is so rude. God, let that man just beat her. No, it won't work. God will make him bitter because God said, love your wife. Did you get it? And he's obeying God. So God will make him disobey him. Do you get it? You can say, God, as she has insulted me, the next time she may insult one general, then they will sort it among themselves. Well, you don't even need to pray that. It will take long before she does that. Do you get it? You must know how to pray. So you don't pray amiss. There are prayers God will not answer. Do you get it? Back to our message. So, in Luke 18, Jesus said, we have to read it very soon, this is the kind of faith that I'm coming for, meaning there's a possibility in the last days, if you need a lot of persistence, that a lot of things may not answer completely at the first command of faith, there is that possibility. Luke 18, I read from verse 1 to 8. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge with fear not God, neither regarded man. There was a widow in that city. She came to him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary, and he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. The Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry, we said, day and night. Let me pause. Let, let me also advise you, be, be careful, you know, there are things that we have set as a rule by man that may not fully be totally operational as set by the scriptures. For example, for man, the day starts in the morning. 
But you know, for God, the scripture, the day starts in the evening. Say, you know, Genesis chapter 1. And the Lord created light. And it was evening and morning and the first day. Eh? If you look at the Genesis chapter 1, we don't normally preach it, but before somebody else starts preaching and it's stressing your life, let me just quickly mention it. Bible says, and the evening and the morning were the first day. It is a morning and evening. So many people have started saying their day starts five. Some say the day starts six. Leave it as morning and evening, though. <laughs> Did you hear me? Eh? Leave it just as it is, yo. Let me ask you, how many days was Jesus Christ in the in the in the uh, in the grave? Three days and what? Three days and three nights. Abby, Friday night to Saturday morning. What was that? Saturday night to Sunday morning. What day? How many days is that? Saturday night to Monday morning is what? When did he say he resurrected? Sunday. Just leave it, JJ. <laughs> the calculation, you know, in the Jewish calendar, is actually Saturday morning. Saturday is Sabbath. So he actually was buried Thursday night. No, no. Wednesday night, in the true sense of it. So Wednesday night to Thursday morning, day one. Thursday night to Friday morning, day two. Friday night to Saturday morning, day three, resurrected. Their own Sabbath is Saturday. But leave Saturday, just leave it as Sunday. Did you hear me? <laughs> eh? Don't say, that's what the Adventists, that's why they separated from everybody, that Sabbath is Saturday. Paul said, don't be drawn back to all this new moon, Sabbath, Day one, day two. It's part of what our brother was reading when he said, Don't drag yourself into it. It will derail you of sonship. So when someone says, hey, But Jesus was died on Thursday, he said, He can be died even on Monday. All I know is that he died three days later. He arose. So whether it's Thursday or Tuesday or Wednesday, it's not my business. What I know is that he died, he arose, and nobody else has died and arose and risen. Case closed, eh? Sometimes the day starts in the evening and it's the morning. Say, both evening and day. All day is unto the Lord. When you do that, your sonship will be safe. Those are subtle things. That's, you know, Satan, that guy is smart. Kai, yeah, 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 yeah. I know him. Say, you are sons. All right, I'm coming. Then he comes with all those subtle things. It does not diminish faith. Neither does he add faith. So ignore it. Did you get it? Yes, if they say, but Jesus, was it really this? Ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> that one who is the only begotten son of God. Hey, but his mother was not really Mary. Her maiden name was uh, Mariona. But a virgin gave birth. Abby? Yes, and that seed was dropped by the Gabriel. Where does Maria now? Or Mary? Does Mary's name, does it make you enter heaven? Does Maria now take you to hell? No. Say, hey, don't worry about Maria now or Mary. You can even go to Israel and go and trace their family root and know their father's name. I wish you all well. I can even contribute some money for your ticket so that we don't see you for a while. <laughs> what is important to me is that he was conceived of a virgin. By the breath of God, the seed entered her. He was born, not by copulation of man and woman, of the Holy Ghost. Abi, and he's only because the son of God. He walked this earth, he died and resurrected, and he's seated at the right hand of power. Whether he's seated in the morning or in the evening, it doesn't matter. Do you get it? Let those who are arguing that stay with that. Do you get it? Uh -huh. I don't know why I'm going off a bit. Maybe somebody needs to hear one of that. So that when they come and start arguing all those two, you know, some Jehovah's Witness, they tell you you can't pray in public. You, must only, you can't pray. If you say, let's pray, they say you can't pray in public. You can only pray in closet. Abi? Yes. So you mustn't pray. Please, let's just go on. Amen. <laughs> so, in verse 7, shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? Any argument of any name that is going to change that name, Jesus, don't agree. If they say his stepfather was not Joseph, 
that Joseph was his uncle, that his stepfather was uh, Joseph Foss, say the Lord bless you. Did you get it? If they say that Mary Magdalene, that Mary Magdalene actually, her uncle is Herod, and <laughs> say God bless you. If they say Jesus, no, hey, don't even go there. Don't don't cross that line. Did you hear me? All right. Thank you. Mm. All right. Let's continue. I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the face of the earth? All right. We established a few things concerning this parable which is number one, to say it and say it and not yet see the result, result and keep saying it's not lack of faith. It's not what? Lack of faith. So to keep saying it until you see it is faith. All right. We also established that maybe because the judge is likened to Satan, and he does not want to give her what she wants. But now, the elect, he didn't even say servants. <coughs> the elect of God comes to him, to God, for something that is his right. This, yeah, he says that in verse 7, shall not God avenge his own elect? Meaning, God must avenge his elect. God must avenge his elect. But the elect has come to God. For he, God, he said, vengeance is mine. Right? Leave it to me. Now the elect is coming to God for vengeance. They are not taking vengeance into their own hands. So God should answer yet. The Bible said they cry to him day and night. So sometimes, even with God, it's not a one-time confession. It can go two, three, four, five, ten, twelve. Are we establishing this? If they had said, the elect come to God for luxuries, I said, you too now. They gave you everything you need. You say you want luxury. Then you go and meet God. And you have to cry day and night. No. This is not luxury. This is what is their due from God. Yet they cried day and night. So it's a pattern in the spirit. So to say it once and get it is good. But if you say it once and you don't get it, it's not lack of faith. You say it the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, until you get it. And it is still tagged faith. So if you say it more than once with God, then the possibility is that you most likely say it more than once with Satan and with men. And the Bible says, that man did not want to give up, but God wants to give to the person crying. Um, let's take a clue from Luke 11. And it came to pass, as he was praying from verse 1, in a certain place, when he sees one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. I said, prayer is a skill. You have to be taught. And usually those who really, really know how to pray, their long prayers is actually either intercession or communion. When you know how to pray, it's usually short. You stay long in prayer for either communion with God or intercession on behalf of somebody else. Okay? Next week, I'll tell you the seven parameters to know. Because sometimes you want to know. I've said it one, two, three. And it's not happening. I've sent it 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's not happening. Am I still in faith or not? Because I need to know if I'm not saying it correctly, then let me change it. So we'll look at the seven parameters to establish that you are in faith. Though you are seeing contrary results. And our brother has taught us to see well. I like that prayer. Psalm 118 verse 18. Lord, open my eyes. That I may behold wondrous things from your word. There are wondrous things in his word and there are dead things in his word. 
but behold my eyes, open it to see the wondrous things. It carries both letter and life. Life and death is in the word. That's why I said, let me show you the life. Those Sabbath are death. Those new moon are death. But faith is life. The law of the spirit of life. And they are both in the word. Right? <clears throat> so, Luke 11, we said prayer has to be taught because it's a skill. Verse 2, he said to them, when you pray, say, our Father, let me jump to verse 5. It was, let me, let me go on. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Verse 5. And he said to them, which of you have So he's trying to use a story to explain prayer. All right? Now he's trying to use a story to explain prayer. Say, so when you pray, say to the Father, I need you to follow me very closely. I need you to follow me. Here, he has taught in Luke 18 the kind of faith he needs to see in the last days, which is persistent faith in the face of contrary evidences, yet you maintain your confession, your stand. Now he's talking about prayer in Luke 11. Then he says, when you pray, tell the Father. So this analogy has to do with your relationship with the Father. So after saying, pray in this manner, our Father which is in heaven. Then he finished, he said, which of you shall have a friend? Now he's trying to help you to be successful in your prayer life with the Father by giving you a story of how to operate with him. If I said, for example, go and meet, um, what name should I use? I didn't hear that one first. I... <laughs> go and meet Stabuki. Tell her to give you this. And she will give it to you. There you go. Say, come. Say, you know that. I'm trying to find a scenario like a natural phenomenon. Then you say that. Say, you know that. Um, I'm trying to find a natural phenomenon to try to explain what in a meet there. <coughs> You're going to be Stabuki Abi. All right. Wow. Come. ATM Elo. Say, two. All right. When you get there, Ah, see your shots. <laughs> I know you say, talking where now? Ah, I'm preparing you for where you are going. You get it? Where you say, can I? <laughs> yes, I can. Ah, ah, look at this man. Say this and this. <laughs> now, when you say this and you hear, sorry, blah, 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 blah. Say you know that when somebody is doing something like this, and it doesn't happen this way. What do we do? You talk, hey, hey, I'm giving you scenarios to prepare you that when you get there, paraventure she turns down your request. This is how to go about it. That's what Jesus is trying to do by giving the story. I'm trying to find a true life experience. Somebody help me. Those of you who have been in the occult prison, if I say that now, nobody will talk because they will say, I've not been in the occult. If I say that, okay, those of you who have been enlightened, <laughs> give a scenario, you know, like, um, hey, like you want to go and meet, a, a, maybe you did something, your husband is angry, and go and greet him. Say, oh no, ah, I can't just go like that. <laughs> no, you need me now, hey, ata, you <laughs> do. Hey, now listen, when you get there, when you get out, you may hear that too. Hey, first put the, don't give it to him because he can throw it away. Do you hear me? Put on the table. Hey, hey. Then they use it. <laughs> what that person is doing is giving you a life experience scenario so that when you get there, no matter what you meet, you'll be able to have your breakthrough. Right? That's what Jesus is saying in this story. Let's hear what he's saying. Then he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend? Go to him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to say before him. And he from within, let's first look at verse 6. That sounds awkward. 
Why? Which of you shall go to a friend at midnight to ask for food? You know, we've said it. Even if your friend has not eaten since the morning, he won't die in the morning. He won't die till morning, Abby. So don't come to me. What is an emergency I want to hear? Don't come to me that you have a friend that he just came from London. Hey, hello, no, London. Yeah. He doesn't have chicken, so Abby. I mean, that's the normal answer. Because you are coming to me at an awkward time. So Jesus is painting the worst case scenario that the things may be so bad that you are appearing before the Father. Everything is awkward. You don't stand a chance. Yet you can still get it. And it's time to teach you what you will use to get it. Because this is a bad case. Midnight for food. Ah. 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 It's as if this, these are greeting our neighbors. It has brought something not pleasant to I will die. Then you remember. I remember when I was killed for three days. Ah, Romi Muke, I should bad What has this guy gone through all this? He seems to get all this. Let me turn away from this place. Maybe I'm getting distracted. All right, back to what we're saying. So it's a bad case for the man going to his friend. Now, Jesus is giving the worst case, approaching God. And say, even in the worst case, if you apply this principle, you will get anything from him. Let's see what he's saying. He said, and he from within, we said to him, ah, don't trouble me now. The door is shut. My children are in bed. We're all sleeping. I can't rise and give you anything at midnight. I say to you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, meaning even this principle transcends relationship, meaning a close ally of God on a bad case may not get it. An enemy of God, if he goes through this process, will get it. So what is the process? He said, though he will not rise and give him because he's his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise, take note, and give him, not what he asked for, as many, Kai, as he needs, as many beyond, what bread, please, I don't want you to wake me again. Add fish. Add, add fried meat. Let them not come and wake me up because of meat again. I mean, <laughs> do, you have, do you have juice to give me? Ah, the juice we just finished. Let's, oh, yeah, yeah. Add juice. He <laughs> said it will work with God. Kai, what's the opportunity? Not backing down. You stay there. God says, sorry, you can't get it. Say, God, I'm sorry I can't leave until I get it. I need it. I need it because of this. That reason is not good enough. I know. But I still want it. And today, um, it's you and I, God. <laughs> he says, though you are Moses, his friend, he will not give it to Moses. But you, far off from God, if you can stand in persistence, he said, you collect not just what you want, as many as you need. That's awesome. That's awesome. Because that's a bad case. Getting it. That much more a good case. A good case now standing. Oh, come on. It's done. It's a done case. Right? Let's look at Matthew 15. Are you enjoying this? From verse 21. Then Jesus went thence, departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. Behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast, cried to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came, besought him, saying, Let's start. He answered her not a word. She didn't go back. Then his disciples came and besought him, saying, send her away. Let me paraphrase this. She's disturbing our peace and she's disturbing our life. He answered and said, 
I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What does that mean? That's a dismissal now. Abby? Sorry, we don't have business together. Eh? Attends. Sorry. He, she comes. Please have mercy on me. He does not answer a word. Then the disciples come to say, She's disturbing us. Do something about it. Say, I am only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Uh, are you telling him to disobey his father? You know what somebody say? Okay, are you not telling me? Okay, 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 all right. Are you telling me to disobey God? I <laughs> mean, you know, they've coined it. Yes, I mean, when someone does that, they've coined it against you. Then you say, ah, I can't tell you to disobey God. Yeah, so that's what you're asking me to do. Then you're twisting up and down. It has already been twisted. You don't have a good case again. Now, he said, excuse me. That's why I still like those old, uh, old uh, Bible. Abby, all right. Now, <clears throat> for the lordship of house of Israel, then came she and worshipped him, saying, "Lord, help me." I like that woman. You can be sent to the lordship of Israel and the lordship of Herod, and the Lord. just okay. No, you can disobey God. Just help me. But he answered and said, ah, it's getting worse. I can't give the children's bread to dogs. That's a good place to get up and say, ah, there's God in heaven. Ah, 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 if we're no more than this, there's God. I mean, hmm. Can you see the, can you see how it's process, can you see the, how it's going? Then she said, of the truth, Lord, dogs still eat crumbs from their master's table. Give me the crumbs, I'm okay with that. And the Lord cried and said, oh, woman, great is thy faith. That's what he's looking for in the last days. That's what he's looking for in the last days. That's what he's looking for. The woman told me, he said, I had 13 miscarriages. 13! After 13, he does back. Come on. As she said, has three, two boys and a girl. After 13 miscarriages. Some would have given up now. Abby? Two boys and a girl. Kakaraka. I think one of them even got married recently. 13! Kai! So you must make your declaration whether to Satan, to the earth, to the institution, or to God. Luke 18, 1, men ought always to pray and not faint. You must make it without fainting. The word faint means don't lose intensity or vigor or hope in the face of a turnaround for the worse. Don't lose intensity in your confession. You know some people can say, I say, I'm, I, I, I'm getting my, uh, my benefit from this institution. They just bring the letter. Say, sorry, the palm sec has signed that you can't get it again. You are not qualified. Ah. <laughs> Kai. It is well. There's God in heaven. Hmm. Ah, God. These people are wicked. They are evil with all I did. They deny me. But I know that I will still... God will do it, Shah. God will, that person has fainted. He has fainted. You gave me a letter, they can't get it. You are the same person that will bring the letter and give it to me that I've gotten it. In this place, I will show you the Lord God who let in the affairs of men. And I will tell you that you, you are paused in his hand. My benefit will not fail. I'm collecting it. That intensity, when you look as if they are moving, they told you, the file is now with the palm sec. From palm sec to minister. Ah, madam. Ah, your file is moving. Ah, I'm getting my benefit because if I'm about to let stop it. Then I say, Pam sex, say cross. Say you are not qualified. Hey, you are fainted. The intensity has waned. Then later you now say, out of religion, hmm, I know there's God, Sha. And I know he will show me mercy. One day I believe I will get my benefit. 
in the name of ah, in the name of Jesus. Even that Jesus, you didn't know what to say it again. That person has fainted. So he's saying, don't lose intensity when it looks like it's looking good and it appears to be failing. Don't change the intensity. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. That's number one. Don't lose intensity. Number two, every confession, even if you have to say it a hundred times, one, you know, in Mark 11, when Jesus caused that victory, he said, let no man eat from you again. Right? That day, when you look at the tree, it is obvious because if there was any change, Peter would have spoken. John may not talk. John may not talk. Even Philip, all of them, sometimes they are afraid. You know? <laughs> they don't know which angle Jesus will come with. Are you still fools? I see without understanding. Ah, oh, <laughs> let me keep quiet. Peter will talk. <laughs> He will get a reprimandation and he will still talk. I know him. He's very his mouth is quick. If there was a change in that tree, Peter would have spoken. Because the next day, when he saw the change, he said, Master, the tree you cursed has withered. What Jesus was trying to say, he started withering from yesterday. The only thing you didn't see is that something was sucking water from under the root. He was sucking it out, but you didn't see it. He said, This woman troubled me. But he didn't give her a request. But he was getting troubled already. So, the woman looks as he comes to her. Get out! Who is that woman? Release the dogs. That useless woman has come again. She wants justice. I'll tell her there will be no justice. Where are the dogs? Where is uh, where's Muiwa? <laughs> Muiwa, release the dogs. Chase her out of the place. Say, yes, sir. To her, nothing has happened. But... He's already troubled, though he has not granted it. At that first command, that water is sucking, but you can't see it. So he said, but I've spoken five times. No. Even the second you spoke is bringing, ra- the whole place is shaking. Something is happening, but you are not seeing it. So don't believe that after saying it five, six, seven times, nothing has changed. Something has changed. You just haven't seen what has changed. He said, because the woman wasn't seeing him troubled. When he comes out of his bragado, is that woman, your slash woman there again? Oh, okay, what's your second name? Oh, she's, okay, I'll use Tommy. See, she's your wife. I'm a ballo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, bundle her in the car and go and throw her at her. When I put her in, throw her on the road. The next day, meet her. This useless woman is here again. Then you don't see, he comes inside and says, Oh, God, what is this? This woman will not kill me. But you are not seeing it. All you are seeing outside is a get out, useless. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And you think it's not working. Now he's inside, say, They bring Oga food. Get out, don't eat anything. He says, Ah, Oga Kaito. Your words have demoralized him. What is left of him is not more than 10%. He's fainting already, he's collapsing. But to you, it looks like it's not working. Said by her continual coming, she's troubling me. Every utterance has its effect. You must know that. Number two. Number three. Are we getting together? (coughs) Number one, don't faint. Number two, every utterance is upsetting something and bringing changes, though you are yet to see it. In dealing with God, it says, verse 7, you cry day and night. But, it says, God's response is with speed. So, like we've prayed today, like let God, let the things do you come in, break through and everything. It's going to happen with speed. Though, they cry day and and night. I have heard people say that if they want somebody to swear, they should use Shongo that is faster than God. No, God's own is faster than Shongo. The only thing is that Shongo will not put into consideration if it's your child and you didn't know. You saw what happened about Jan. The father said he didn't know. Abby, what if he has gone to swear with Shongo that, ah, it's just that they stop his daughter. Whoever they stop this, let them die. God, they say God didn't move. But God, if you had moved, you had killed your child. He said, wait till the full harvest. 
lest removing the task you damage the wheat. God is faster than Shongo or Rumila or Bantala Ogun. Eh? I get, you know it now. Mention them. But I know you know it. Ayilale. Those, the other one used to go, that one mention out. <laughs> you know, I said used to. I didn't say you still go. I said used to. <laughs> The way he said it, you know that uh, you know that he was uh, you get it. How well, did he say it again? <laughs> oh Jesus, oh my. So God is fast. Don't say it's slow. It's against his knowledge. And it's against him. Don't rise against God. He says this thing is taking time. God is fast. He said he will do it what speedily. <clears throat> when God told Abraham, he said, I've changed your name to Abraham. How many times do you think Abraham called himself Abraham? Because that's his name now. It's every day, right? He said, this time next year, Sarah will have a son. So the delay in court is three months. In those three months, Abimelech captured her. We don't know how long. You know, they put her in a chamber where they're using spices like uh, Esther. They use spices and everything to prepare for the king. And as they finish the preparation, God said, you're a dead man. Say, so, eh, another man's wife told, they prepared her for Abraham. So in the true sense of it, that time frame, when it's yet to happen, is a preparation for God for you. That's how God is working. It's a preparation from God. Now, God says, this time next year, Sarah will have a son. A king captures her. What's in Abraham's mind? In the true sense, in a natural person, the prophecy is lost. And some men can be so nasty that, ah, <laughs> Sarah, whoa, let nothing happen there. Everything happened. Whoa, la ye, you are now nothing again. You know, some men are like that. <laughs> I don't know whether that's even what he was saying, but I don't think Abraham, Abraham was a liberal minded man. When you look at it, you know he was a liberal minded man. So, it's even he's ranting and angry and ranting and cursing and everything. But everything was in preparation for him because he's not, she's not that attractive to him again. She's wrinkled. And by the time she's coming out of that chamber, she's looking like a, what do you want to call it? A, a more, All right, I banned you from talking. You are banned from talking. You support. You are banned from talking until further notice. All right. Then she comes out. So, God's, when you say to God, it's quick. He's just making sure that it's in your best interest for everything. Hallelujah. Number, is it four or five? In verse, look, 18 again. I have to close now. I might still even have to continue this next week. <coughs> Verse 7. Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, do he bear long? Do you know what it means to bear with someone? What it means is this. If I'm bearing with you, I'm traveling, and I need some documents. And I say, give me the documents I kept with you. I need to travel now. I say, yeah, I don't know where I put it all. Let me check the drawer. So I am waiting. While you are checking the drawer, you didn't see it. I am bearing. What it means is I'm bearing with you. Hey, ah, where did you put it? I'm already running late. Hurry up. Hey, just a minute. Ah, where did I put this document? But I told you that I need this document where I'm traveling to. And I have to leave. What I'm doing is I'm bearing with you. Meaning... God is the one waiting on you. You are not the one waiting on God. So God wants it done faster than you want it done. That's what it means. Because I need the documents. Without it coming to pass, God cannot be glorified. He cannot be glorified. So he's bearing. So each time you confess, he's bearing. He's waiting for that thing to be done. Pending is done He's, let me use the word, on his toes. Pending is done. Let me use the word, he can't sit. 
I know it's seated, it's never moved. But I'm using as analogies for you to understand. Pending the time is done. He can't do any other thing. He's distracted. Oh, where is this document? That's what it means to bear with somebody. So when God is bearing with you what you are saying, who was it done faster? You or God? It's God. He bear long. That means he's partaking of that situation you are in with you. And he's not being glorified in it. And he wants to be glorified. So don't think because you're saying it three, four, five times, you're on your own. No, you're not on your own. It's working. God is bearing with it. God is waiting on it. God is ready to run with it. To get it done faster than you can imagine. However, the scripture says, you may have to say it more than once, twice, 10, 15, I don't know. I don't know how many times Abraham called himself Abraham. But it took three months for Sarah to take him because it takes nine months for her to give birth and was a one-year space, right? So it must have been three months. I don't know how many times he said it in a day. Probably 10. I don't know how many times he was called. And not only did he use the fact that he was saying it to himself, he used the parameter, which is his name. Others too were calling him father of many nations. I'm the one. Father of many nations, I'm the one. I'm father of many nations. Father of many nations. I'm father of many nations. Father of many nations. I'm father of many nations. Father of many nations. He became the father of many. It will work. It works. Did you hear me? Tell somebody, say it works. Tell another person, say it works. Tell another person, say it works. You know, actually, my favorite part in this place is the confession of that judge. She, she's troubling me. But take it from me, when he comes outside to see her, he doesn't look troubled. He puts up a face. Oh, he's making noise. There. But when he goes inside, he's all guys say, I can't eat. So his soul is troubled, Jerry. Voila, this woman's voila is too much. Ah, oh God, what do we do? Say, leave me alone. But she's not seeing that. And if she gives a gossip, but you're close. He's already collapsing in there. It's just not too long. He's going to give up. Come on, hang in. Don't back down. Shake a little. These are not the times for those who will back down. Amen? Yes. Glory. Amen. Proverbs says the righteous can fall seven times. They do what? They rise again. They rise again. I found out in natural principles it works. You know, I've been in scenarios. Maybe I'm in a hospital. They're attending to a patient. Maybe they're trying to set a line. They try first, it doesn't go. Try second, it doesn't go. Try third, five, six, seven, nine, it doesn't go. The doctor gives up. So you might have to use um, injury. I said, doctor, try one more time. And he gets it. You've not seen that happen. Where you say, just try one more time. And they say, wow, God saved us with that. It happens in natural. Natural. I, you know, God is a respecter of processes. I believe this is our former president that just passed on. It's because he just fulfilled that process. Try the first. Try the second. Try the third. I think it was fourth or fifth. He got it, Abby. Fourth. And that one to do now. Four is uh, four times four. Uh, four times eight. Thirty-two. Uh, no. It's up over 20 years now. Eh? Four times four. No, they, they were, okay. Oh, four, 16 years. In try. Abby? <clears throat> I close with this, which you've heard so many times, which you know. Once upon a time, there was a man who failed in business at the age of 31. <laughs> Defeated for legislature at 32. His sweetheart died when he was 35. Had a nervous breakdown at 36. Defeated in election at 38. Defeated for Congress at 43. At this stage, what do you tell him? Okay. 
go and rest. Eh? What do you tell this man? Ah, you have been banned, though. You can. You have been banned. Okay, no, I like to say that. Oh, see, no, I call it. I can lie to say that. But after now, you are banned again. <laughs> say, Oga, look for another work to do. Is that not what we tell him? Yes, you are wasting money. Do you know how much you have spent on election? That business we told you about, if you had started it, you'd have grown bigger than this. Abby, let's continue. He was defeated for Senate at 55. Defeated for Vice Presidency at 56. Ah, ah, I shan't try, Lori Shirishi. <laughs> I tell you, is this Senate you really want or got which one? Try. I, I wait to my day. Was again defeated for Senate at 58. Elected president of the United States at 60, Abraham Lincoln. So what if he had given up? That's still one of the greatest presidents of the United States to date. Abraham Lincoln. Can you see the, f what do you call it? Failure? No. That's the difference between, that's what our brother was saying. Natural man sees it as failure. God sees it as faith. Because he did it give up. That's all. There were enough grounds to give up. Abby, have you seen an election where they read, um, I want to be careful in the first head, L-A-D, 18,366. <coughs> A-M, I don't want to call it because there are funny names now there. A-M-M, 488. L-L-L, 4. You've, have you heard it before? Or you didn't follow the election? Four. You know that that four can still eventually become the president. All he needs, after four years, he comes again. After four years, he comes again. I don't know the demon that's an election. You want to say, please, this man is troubling our life. Give him what he wants. <laughs> eh? You know what I like about God when you are in faith? And you go to your house. And when you are going, well, this is what I'm saying now. It doesn't matter because he has attained the height he wanted to. He's crying. He said, I'm not running again. Then he goes to Daura. <laughs> then they go and meet him in Daura. So, God, oh yeah, come on. Come and collect. It's your own turn now, Abby. Eh? Did you hear me? Hello? Then they give him bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, when, is, when you come back to faith, they may have to redress you and repackage you. <laughs> but the combination is that you got it. Either way you look at it, that's your own cup of tea. What is important? He got it. Abby? He didn't give up, that's why. And fortunately, when he was giving up, he had help us who did give up on him. He said, you should come and try another one. That's always the one that makes it. When they say, ah, just one more, it's always the one that makes it. Father, we thank you. I want to pray a prayer for you. If there's anything you have declared that has started a process in the spirit realm and is yet to materialize and you are waning in strength you are getting tired. You know, Jesus said, the spiritual is willing, but the flesh is weak. Meaning, I'm tired. The Bible says, a mighty angel came and strengthened him. May God strengthen you. May his spirit strengthen you in your inner man in the name of Jesus. May he keep you on your feet. Make your feet like the hinds feet. Set you upon your high places in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, Lot lingered. But the angels did what? Pushed him. When you are lingering and you ought to move, let God send his angels to push you 
and push you in the name of Jesus. May the Lord find pleasure in you. The faith is looking for, may he find it in you. May he act speedily on your behalf according to his word. May he glorify himself in your situation. Lord Jesus said, ask that your joy may be full, that the Father may be glorified. And until your joy is full, God cannot be glorified. May your joy be full. May God be glorified in your life, in your health, in your career, in your situation, in your circumstances, in the name of Jesus. You know, that man they carried and opened the roof. I don't know whether he has given up, but his friends didn't give up. But one thing the former president said, he said, I am not running again. And he went to Dara and they went to pick him. May God send help us your way who will help you who will support you who will assist you to stand and forge forward in the name of Jesus thank you father thank you lord and in the day that they will raise your father Vashti had nobody to speak for her. <clears throat> Joseph had somebody to speak for him. God will raise a voice for you. Yes. If it takes and it means an angel of God to take the form of somebody they respect and go there, God will raise a voice for you yes. in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Every step of faith you have taken will end with great joy. It will prosper. It will excel in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. And when I remember the testimony of that lady who said she had 13 miscarriages, if I mention her name, some of you know her. And she has three beautiful children. I think one of the children got married because I think she got sent me a message. We pray with me, blah, blah, blah. I think the son or daughter is getting married, blah, 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 blah. And stuff like that. And um, you won't go through that. Amen. You will not go through that. Amen. That means you will not suffer losses. Amen. Oh God Almighty. El Shaddai, many-breasted one, the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus, they will show up. Oh. Yes. Like they showed up at the tomb of Lazarus. They say it's late. They say it's not late. He will show up. Yes. And it will not be late. Yes. And you will laugh. Yes. And people not will laugh at you. But they will laugh with you. Amen. You will dance. Amen. You will rejoice. Amen. You will give thanks. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.